And at the end of that trip, he found the most amazing thing any archaeologist has ever found in the Maya world. According to Friedel, Pakal believed he was the embodiment of a god. The tomb would be a map of his journey through death to resurrection. subterranean staircase he found a stone box right here and he had to remove it when he removed it he found the sacrificial bones of a series of young people and then he found this huge doorway triangular and he pulled it away and peered inside what he saw was fantastic. It was a burial chamber with a massive sarcophagus inside of it, glistening with stalactites from centuries of water dripping down inside of it. So it was like a cave, but it was a sacred, holy cave. Women would have carefully shrouded Pakal's body in cotton winding sheets. of jade, symbol of life, were pressed into his hands. When his body was completely shrouded, it was drenched in red cinnabar, magical effication of blood, the essence of life. A jade mask would become Pakal's face for all eternity. Sealed in his sarcophagus, Pakal began a journey that would end with his rebirth as the god of eternal life, the maze god. Carved on the sarcophagus lid was the image of Pakal himself but not as an old man, but as a beautiful young lord. He's sitting inside of a bowl of sacrifice, and that bowl is at the base of a tree, and the cross-shaped tree is called the Wakachan. It's the world tree, it's the Milky Way. He was going to climb up the stars. It says, Och Bay. When he died, he entered the path. He goes up into the sky, and there he rises in triumph as the maze god reborn. Pakal's journey into the sky would take him back in time to the origins of the Maya world, where he would merge with the gods who created it. Pakal believed these gods were his ancestors, who sprang from a mythic place at the beginning of Maya time. Pakal and his people traced themselves back to Khan, the primordial city. Khan was the place of the maze god's birth. That was the place. It really happened. It's like Jerusalem for the Maya. That's the place they remember, this Camelot, this original city at, at the beginning of the Maya creation. Like Camelot, this creation place was a powerful dream. It would resonate through Maya culture for centuries. But were they thinking of a real place? It's controversial, but Friedel believes they were. The Mirador Basin and the sleeping giant at its center, El Mirador.
built this great metropolis. Richard Hansen and his colleagues think they found some vital clues on beautifully painted pots from around 700 AD. Their hieroglyphs list a lineage of kings with their dates of enthronement. The first king that is indicated uh, right here, the very first king is indicated on seven, seven twin and 19 pope, the day name, the month name, and three Emish, seven Yash, we have the Chakchapat, the Lord of Khan. So the, the sequence continues for 19 successive kings in a row. The dates made no sense. Then, fellow researcher Simon Martin had an idea. The Maya calendar is cyclical, repeating every 52 years. What if the pots were talking about kings from some earlier cycle of Maya time? What if they pushed the dates back a thousand years, deep into the pre-classic? Richard's hieroglyph specialist, Stanley Gunter, did the math. And he called it an eureka moment. And lo and behold, we find that these dates do fit perfectly starting in 392 BC. So we think that this indeed is a sequence of kings that is a retrospective history, painted about 700 AD, referring to kings 1300 years earlier. If the theory is right, they have found a dynasty, 19 early Maya kings previously unknown to history. One of the kings on the pots is known as Great Fiery Jaguar Paul, the same king whose symbol seems to be emblazoned on the front of the temple at El Mirador. We've got about uh, 13 and a half yards into the building now, and that represents about 22 cubic yards of rock that we brought out of there. This is one of the, the really tough parts of my archaeology because it's hot in these tunnels. It's a, there's no movement of air to speak of. You're confined, it's dangerous. It will take Richard weeks to tunnel to the place where the imaging system showed a cavity. But there are fascinating discoveries along the way. For example, here's the, here's the handprint, the left hand of a, of a person who put it right there. Put the stone and mud right there. You know, when you put your, when you put your fingers in their handprint, it makes 2,200 years evaporate. As Richard digs, more clues to the grandeur of pre-classic kings are coming from beyond the Mirador Basin. Guatemalan archaeologist Francisco Estrada Belli is on his way to another pre-classic site. The rains have begun and the roads are virtually impassable. But the effort has been worth it. With funding from the National Geographic, it has led Francisco to a major find at another forgotten pre-classic city, Sival. So we don't have just one large city like Mirador, but a network of cities in the Maya lowland which existed in the pre-classics. When Francisco discovered the main temple of Sival, he found that looters had dug away the back of the pyramid. Near the top, they left a small hole. So I came here and I saw there was this opening in what looks like the front of the pyramid. And I stuck my hand here and I could feel it wasn't flat. There was a rise on the plaster. And I thought, well, maybe this is a, a snake uh, carved on the front of the, of the building or maybe a mustache on a mask. And I thought maybe we should dig uh, and find the front of the building coming the other way. Francisco worked his way round to the front of the temple.